Oftentimes we find ourselves digging deeper into these amazing topics. And sometimes you can get to a point where you feel satisfied with what you discovered just for a short time. Then finding yourself searching for more. And so, the orb and scepter, seen as two of the most authoritative monarchical symbols, used as the coronation of each new sovereign, full of symbolism and power. But why are they used? And what do they mean? Well, why don't you do yourself a favor and pop the popcorn, grab yourself a cold beverage, and stay tuned right after this. And you can change it in a naked time. So what were the scepter and orb that Russian czars used and why did Ivan the Terrible believe his staff had healing abilities? Before we get into that, I just want to give you a quick backstory on Ivan the Terrible. Ivan was the son of Grand Prince Vasily III of Moscow and his second wife, Yelena Linskaya. He was to become the penultimate representative of the Rurik dynasty. On December 4th, 1533, immediately after his father's death, the three-year-old Ivan was proclaimed Grand Prince of Moscow. His mother ruled in Ivan's name until her death in 1538. The deaths of both Ivan's parents served in to reanimate the struggles of various factions of nobles for control of the person of the young prince and for the power. The years 1538 through 47 were thus a period of murderous strife among the clans of the warrior caste commonly termed boyars. Their continual struggles for the reins of government to detriment of the realm made a profound impression on Ivan and imbued him with a lifelong dislike of the boyars. On January 16, 1547, Ivan was crowned Tsar and Grand Prince of all Russia. The title Tsar was derived from the Latin title Caesar and was translated by Ivan's contemporaries as Emperor. In February 1547, Ivan married Anastasia Romanovna, a great aunt of the future first Tsar of the Romanov dynasty. As of now, Ivan is interred in the royal crypt the Cathedral of St. Michael the Archangel within the Kremlin in Moscow. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can move on with further details. Holding the scepter in the right hand and the orb in the left hand, the Russian monarch would seat himself on the throne in the final part of the Russian coronation ceremony. The first czar to use this regalia was Theodore I of Russia in 1557 through 1598. Son of Ivan the Terrible and the last one was Nicholas II on April 27, 1906. Although on this occasion the emperor didn't touch the regalia. Instead, they were placed on a ceremonial table to the right of Nicholas II. A monarch's staff is probably the oldest symbol of power. Its origins trace back to the shepherd's and holy men's staff, which would symbolize a shepherd's power over his herd. 
and a priest's power over his parish, respectively. The staff was also often used by high-ranking priests in many different religions. The staff in a monarch's hand would symbolize the trunk of the tree of life, connecting heaven and earth. Such a staff can be seen on ancient Russian coins of Vladimir the Great and Prince Svyatopolk. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. On them, the prince is holding a staff adorned with a cross. Such pictures are also found on Beazetine's coins of the same era. A rod or a scepter is slightly different. It's shorter. A rod was used in the military of the Roman Empire as the commander's attribute. And later, in the Middle Ages, rods were adopted by European monarchs as their attribute of military and secular power. The first rod in Russia was probably depicted in the illustrations to the Radswell Chronicle 13th century were Sviatoslav the second of Kiev holds a scepter hopefully I didn't butcher that while meeting German envoys but officially a scepter wasn't used until the 16th century and Prince of the Muscovy Zardom used staffs as the regalia along with the crown in 1553 English envoys Robert Chancellor and Clement Adams recorded that Ivan the Terrible met them seated on a gilded seat with a crown on his head and with a scepter made of crystal and gold in his right hand since then the Tsar always held a scepter during ceremonies but Ivan the Terrible always carried a staff with him as a symbol of his power Jerome Horsey another English diplomat in Russia recorded that Ivan believed his staff made out of unicorn's horn had healing abilities during a conversation with Horsey Ivan announced I am poisoned with disease he then ordered his personal doctor to draw a circle on a table with Ivan's jewel encrusted staff topped off with a unicorn's horn most likely a narwhal tusk so they say and put two spiders in it one died the other, the other ran off and Ivan said it's too late it will not preserve me during the coronation of Thedor I of Russia in 1584 Theodore used both the staff that he held and the scepter and orb that both were carried on a pillow before him unfortunately Theodore's scepter didn't survive to our days hmm that's questionable the oldest known scepter of the Russian Tsars was the one used by the first Romanov Mikhail the first of Russia at his coronation and beyond this scepter was most likely received as a gift from Holy Roman Empire Rudolf II another one used by Alexis of Russia came from Istanbul in 1662 together with an orb during Peter the Great's coronation Peter used an old styled scepter made in Moscow this one looked much like the scepters of the Ruikids but in 1762 Leopold Pfizer an Austrian jeweler under Russian service made an imperial scepter for Catherine II which has been used in coronations ever since in 1774 the Orlov diamond was 
mounted onto the scepter. It's 59.6 centimeters in length and weighs 604 grams. 395 grams of gold, 60 grams of silver, 193 diamonds were also used to make this scepter. Since 1967, it's on display in the Diamond Fund in the Kremlin Armory. The orb, or to put it more precisely, the Globus Cruciger, that is Latin for cross-bearing orb, by the way, is also a piece of royal regalia, and it symbolizes the monarch spiritual and religious power over the world. You hear that, guys? Let me repeat that again. It symbolizes the monarch spiritual and religious power over the world. Like what? Like a rod. Scepter. The orb also came from the Roman Empire. The plain sphere held by the god Jupiter represented the world, which is pagan, by the way, or the universe, while the metal sphere slash orb held by the emperor represented his dominion. With the development of Christianity, the orb was topped with a cross. The emperor held the orb, the so-called world slash globe, which we know is not, in his hand to show he ruled it on God's behalf. Just like the scepter, the use of the orb was adopted from Constantinople by the Russian Tsars. There are four Russian orbs. The first one was used by the first Romanov, Mikhail I of Russia. This one came with the scepter from Rudolf II. It features scenes from the life of the biblical king, David. Take that one for a fact. The Greek orb, which came from Istanbul in 1662 together with a scepter, was used by Alexis of Russia. An orb was also made for Peter II of Russia, and it was quite small because in 1727, the monarch was just a 12-year-old boy. Finally, the imperial orb, which is 24 centimeters high and 48 centimeters inch in diameter, was made for Catherine II by the court jeweler George Frederick Eckhart. It is a smoothly polished golden globe surrounded by diamonds, belts. During the reign of Paul I of Russia, the orb was decorated with a Ceylon sapphire weighing 195 carats, carats, sorry. A total of 465 grams of gold, 305 grams of silver, and 13 I'm sorry, that's 1370 diamonds. I repeat, 1370 diamonds were also used to make that orb. So, we see that the scepter could be seen as a formalized representation of a wand or a staff. Often considered as signs of authority and certainly dated back to the Egyptians, where we see representations of the staff in hieroglyphics, but as an idea, it is certainly much older. In the biblical narratives of Moses, we read that he had a staff which may have been used for walking, but certainly was used for magical operations. There are also tales and illustrations of wizards carrying staffs with served likewise as walking aids and magical devices. Kings and priests from ancient Greece onwards have been depicted as carrying a scepter or a staff. If we think about the staff as a length of wood, it could also be seen to represent the world or tree 
and it certainly has this connotation in neo-pagan traditions. It is the rod, the tree, that connects the worlds, the realms of the underworld, the middle world, and the upper world. The Axis Mundi. So, scepters and staffs are about position, rank, or authority. The sphere can be seen to be represented as a world, so they say, a material world. When there is a cross placed above it in Christian mythology, it is often seen as God's power over the world. Hence, a person holding the orb can be seen as a representative of God's power on earth. And according to Ivan the Terrible, the power can be seen and conducted through the orb and the scepter, ultimately having the ability to heal. And quite possibly, more than we know. Anyway, that is going to be it for today, folks. And I hope you all enjoyed this video, as I enjoyed making it for you all. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more Kingdom Within content. And as always, you all be safe out there. Be blessed. Until next time. You say one word, I say amazing. Yeah. You say one word, I say amazing.